Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question or questions from the October 2023 Pure Mathematics P3 International A Level at Excel exam from October 2023. And this, these, these questions, I'm going to answer them one by one, one video at a time. Each video will uh, you know, be on, on a particular topic. And I'll save them in playlists. You'll notice at the end of each video on the top here will be the playlist for this particular paper. And over here you'll find the playlist for the topic that it's from. If there's more than one topic, I'll put some more playlists and so on. So, you know, you can quite easily access um, the rest of the paper like that. Um, so, again, I'm not going to just like read out the mark scheme or just copy the mark scheme without explaining. You know, sometimes I'm going to explain the certain concepts which I feel are necessary for my experience as a teacher and things you know where i find students sometimes have misconceptions or they need further clarification so it's not like i'm doing it in real time how i would answer the questions in a real exam that's not the whole uh, purpose of this. this is the purpose of this is to help to use this as a teaching tool to explain certain concepts to students okay so that's the main reasoning behind me doing these questions all right so um i'm going to start with question number one Question number one, it says a curve has equation y equals f of x, where f of x equals x squared minus 5x plus e to the power of x, where x is an, an element of the real numbers. And so it, all x values are in the domain of this function. So show that the equation f of x equals 0 has a root alpha in the interval 1, 2. Now, first of all, what does this mean? Some students don't understand what this means, and they think this is like a coordinates of a point or something. So the first thing we need to clarify is this notation here this is called interval notation so what this means is if they say the interval one two it doesn't mean the coordinates of the point one two it means basically um you know that the x value okay the value of alpha you could say in this case alpha all right which is going to be an x value because it's a root is between it's greater than or equal to 1 or less than or equal to 2. It's between those values, somewhere between those values. Between 1 and 2, including 1 and including 2. That's what it means. If it was, for example, like this, and it said the interval before it, and they were, they're, they're curved brackets and not square brackets, then the, it means the equal sign is not included. So this means, basically, 1 is, alpha is between 1 and 2. That's what that means. If on one side it was squared, and the other side is curved, where it's squared, you'll have the equal sign with the inequality. And the, where it's curved, you won't have it. If you want to, for example, if you have something, if you want to show, suppose you want to show x, x is greater than 4. Then what you would do is you'd start from 4 with a curved bracket, and then you'd go up to positive infinity. And that would be a curved bracket as well, because you can never get to infinity. Or if you want to say x is less than, for example, um, less than or equal to 4. All right, then on this side, you'd have a, a, a square bracket with a 4. On this side, you'd have negative infinity. It means from 4 all the way back to neg negative infinity. So there's some examples of how um, this interval notation actually works. So you understand it's basically, it's another way of writing a, um, an inequality. Okay, so the root, that means the alpha is, has a value somewhere between 1 and 2. Somewhere between 1 and 2, there's going to be the, the root of this equation. All right. So the root means basically the solution. Okay, so f of x equals 0. The equation x squared minus 5x plus e to the power of x equals 0 is saying it has a solution somewhere between values x equals 1 or 2. Okay, x equals alpha is the root. And the value of alpha is somewhere between these two values. And we've got to show that that's the case. So first of all, what we do is we write down... Um, f of x equals x squared minus 5x plus e to the power of x. Okay, now, what we're going to do now is we're going to replace inside this expression one of the limits. So we're going to put 1 in here, x equals 1. That gives us 1 squared minus 5 times 1 plus e to the power of 1. Okay, and I'm also going to put the other limit, which is 2 in here. It's going to give me 2 squared minus 5 times 2 plus e to the power of 2. So this is going to give me 1 minus 5. If I, I'll write it as a decimal. I'll write, I'll write the actual value because e is an irrational number. So you end up with 1 minus 5 
Okay, plus E. Plus E. The E value is, if you can see here, alpha. And this button gives you the, no, sorry. Is it the alpha here? Just write alpha and this button. Yeah, that's E. 1 minus 5 plus E. So that gives you negative 1.2817 negative 1.2817 continues on and when you put two in there instead if i put two can i go back up it no i didn't actually put it in so that's going to be four minus 10 plus and this time i'm going to have e squared so alpha this and squared right that's four minus 10 plus E squared, which gives us a positive value, 1.38905. 8905 goes on. Okay, now we can see here that what's happened is the, the, the sign has changed. Okay, I'm just going to do this so that you can see here that what's happened is the sign has changed. All right that when I put um, F1 in here, gave you a negative value. So F1, F1 is less than zero and F2 is greater than zero, okay? So what does that actually mean? It means that there must be a root between those two values because what does it mean when there's a root? It means it crosses the x-axis, okay? A root is a place where the, the function crosses the x-axis. So if at one, it was a negative value. So at one, the graph was somewhere down here. So there was a point down here, which has that value minus 1.281. Okay, so that would be the value at one. So if this is the y-axis, okay, that would be a point, okay, on the curve. And then when x equals two, okay, the curve is now up here somewhere. Okay, so how did it get up there? It must have crossed the axis somewhere between one and two. We don't know exactly where, but somewhere between them, it's crossed the axis because the sign uh, has changed between one and two. Okay, so we can say as between F1 and F2, there is a change in sign. Therefore, a root must exist. A root must exist. Okay, and we can say in addition, um, and it's a continuous function. And it's a continuous function. Okay, it's not one which has an asymptote. Because when you have an asymptote, sometimes there is a change in sign, but there's no root. For example, you could have something like this. Between this point and this point, like if I took, if I took these two values here, Okay, um, you know, at this point it will be negative, at this point it will be positive. There's a change in sign, but there's no root because there's an asymptote, right? So it's a continuous function, and there's a change in sign, okay? Um, therefore, there must be a root between those two values, okay? And it is a continuous function. I'll just write that. Sorry about my bad writing. Okay, so here we have the answer to part A. Okay, so that's, we. they want to see this. They want to see these values. Don't just say, oh, this is negative, this is positive. Show the actual value that you got when you put the values in. They want to see that you substitute them in. And they want to they want to see this little sentence or statement, change in sign. That has to be there, okay, in your sentence. If they see change in sign and they see the values are one's positive, one's negative, then you will get the mark for that question. All right, now, the iterative formula, okay, xn plus 1 equals the square root of 5xn minus e to the power of xn, with x1 equals 1 is being is used to find an approximate value for the root. So basically, the iterative formula is found by making one of the x's the subject of the formula when you write f of x equals 0. Okay, so here what they've done is they've obviously made this x the subject. So they've added 5x and subtracted e to the power of x from both sides and found the square root. And this is the called the iterative formula, okay? And it helps us to find or to focus into what the root of the equation is for equations which are not easy to solve algebraically. So it's like a, almost like a, you could say a manual method of 
of finding the, the, the root. And you can find it to more and more um, accuracy um, depending on how far you go. So now, what they've told us to do is they've told us to use this iterative formula. So you start off with the value that they ask you to put in, which is x1. So we know x1 equals 1, all right? So we're going to replace, instead of x, we're going to replace 1. So x2, the second value of x we're going to get is when we replace um, the x here with 1. So we're going to have the square root of 5 times 1 minus e to the power of 1. So basically what we're doing is we're saying x2 is equal to the square root of 5 times x to the power of um, 1, x, sorry, x1 minus e to the power of x1. Okay, so we're putting x1 in here, right? Now, then what we've got to do to find x3, we've got to put in place of here what x2 is. So I have to find x3, I have to find 5x2 five, five minus e to the power of x2. So I've got to have to keep putting the new result of this into this formula. So a nice easy way of doing this to make life easy and so that you can just keep just pressing a button instead of having to write out the formula every time or to type it on your calculator every time is as follows. You can just say, all right, I want one to be my answer in the calculator. All right, so I'm going to press one equals. Okay, so now the answer, you know, what's stored in the calculator as the last answer is one. Okay, so I press one equals. So what I can do is set this up with the square root of five times now i'm not going to say five times uh one i'll say five times answer okay in this case in the, in the beginning the answer is going to be one so that's going to be five times one minus and i'm going to do the same thing here i'm going to put e to the power of so i can use this e to the power of and again i'm going to put answer so the answer we we, we press one and equals so the answer in the calculator right now is one so you have the square root of five times one minus e to the power of one and that will give us this value, which we should write down, which is 1.5105. We want to give the answer to four decimal places in the end. Um, okay, x2 to four decimal places. So you have 1.510535. So 1.510535, it continues. So to four decimal places, you can say x2 is going to be, that's one, two, three, four. You stop here after four decimal places. 1.5105. So there's the answer for part one. This is part one. Then part two says, find by repeated iteration the value of alpha, giving your answer in the end to four decimal places. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to just carry on. So now, because we have this as our latest answer, when I press equals again, what's going to happen is it's going to input this wherever it says answer, which is what I have to do. All right, because x3 is the square root of 5 times x2 minus e to the power of x2. Now, in x2 is this value here. So now, in my calculator, I have this as my answer. So what's, what's going to happen next? When I press equals, it's going to find 5 times this minus e to the power of this, which is exactly what I want. So I press equals again, and it gives me 1.738827. 1.738827. Two seven, I'll just write it to a few decimal places like that, and then I have x four. Now I'm not going to bother writing this. I'll just put the answer down. Press equals again. That gives me one point seven three three. So I'll write it over here, so that one point seven three three zero five two two zero five two two. So you can see it's starting to, you know, settle down to a certain value. Um, and every time we press equal. We're going to get closer and closer and when it settles down in four decimal places and doesn't change those four decimal places stay at the same value i'm going to then stop so if i press equals again that gives me 1.7341 1.7341 okay um seven five go on all right let's go on and carry on press equals again it gives 1.7333961 1.733961961 sorry because it continues on all right let's press equals again it keeps it's starting to move around a bit it's messing about a bit let's see 1.734002 it's gonna basically home in on an answer so 
we're, we've got now the first two decimal places are kind of like fixed. Let's kind of press equals again. Okay. It's going to be 1.733994456. That's quite nice. 1.7, 1.733. 33 okay 99446 and you don't actually have to write this each of these 44456 four, sorry okay you don't have to actually write these all down okay you can just press equals until you find it settles down and that will be fine so if i i'm just showing you what numbers come up so we can compare press equals again now you can see it's starting to settle down so 1.7339995 1.733995. It looks like um, the, fir the four decimal places will be 17340. But well, let's have a look and make sure. Press equals again. See, it's going gonna, it's gonna to start settling down now. See, the rest of them, are, it's going to stop changing. So to four decimal places, we have 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, we can say therefore it's going to be equal to 1. We can say alpha is equal to 1.73. If you round this, that's going to be 7340 to so four decimal places. So that is the value of alpha. Does it say four? Yes, they did. Okay, by repeated iteration means keep putting the value back in here. And this little trick with the calculator helps you to do it easily. So we could have, we didn't actually have to write all of these down. What we did there for x2 is fine. Maybe you could write x3 down, but you can just keep pressing equals until this happens, until it stops changing. And then you write the answer down to four decimal places as we did. Okay, so there we have the answer to question number one, A and B. I hope that was clear. Um, other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will be appearing at the top of the screen at the end of this video for this paper. Other questions dealing with iteration and numerical methods from P3 can be found in the playlist that will appear in this region over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this list, on this link here, sorry. And the video here will show you how to find the index PDFs, which will help you to navigate my channel to find what you're looking for easily. Thank you for watching and see you soon.